exploring the iconic style of Carolyn Bassett Kennedy. It is safe to say that she was one of the most stylish women of her era, being an early pioneer of minimal, clean-cut elegance. She taught us that classic silhouettes, clean lines, and solid colors never get old, and that quiet, confident taste never goes unnoticed. People knew about Carolyn Bissett because she was John Kennedy Jr.'s wife. But even before her marriage, she was nothing short of a standout. In her senior year of high school, her classmates dubbed her the ultimate beautiful person in her yearbook. And later, someone from Calvin Klein had spotted her walking down the street, and soon after, she was working as a sales clerk in their Boston store. Within a year, yet another Calvin Klein executive took notice of her, and she was on her way to New York. She was put in charge of selling to celebrity clients, such as Faye Dunaway and Diane Sawyer. She sold millions of dollars worth of clothes. Carolyn quickly graduated to publicist for Klein's high-end collection line, which she developed a reputation for shouting matches with models and underlings. Insiders say she was very demanding and opinionated, and they also say that she was an essential asset to the company. Carolyn had a real knack for picking up on trends, even before they happened at Calvin Klein. She was also an incredible advertisement for the brand itself, as her style embodied the brand's image of elegant minimalism. Carolyn was extremely intelligent and intentional, which is deeply reflected in her fashion style. She knew exactly what looked good on her, and that's exactly what she wore. She wanted to be different, ahead of the trends, timeless, and yet be noticed by everyone. For example, when college ended, she got rid of her beautiful, large, full mane that was very popular in the 80s. Her hair was darker, and her body was more full, but she decidedly changed much of this. She got thinner, wore less makeup, plucked her eyebrows, and dyed her hair a much lighter blonde. Through working at Calvin Klein and knowing many people in the fashion business, she was now exposed to experts who could definitely give her a few pointers. I'm sure during this time, she went to go see a color stylist, which helped to distinguish the colors and patterns that would look best on her. Carolyn fell into the public eye when she officially began dating JFK Jr. in 1994. And it is from this point on that we see her iconic style come to fruition. Carolyn's style was elegant, pared down, and simple. And she knew how to perfectly pair classic pieces with modern ones to create a harmonious result. Many people have the notion that she had a small wardrobe, simply because she rewore many of the items, or had many similar looking items. And if one wanted to recreate her style, they simply wouldn't need very many pieces. But Carolyn had a great deal of clothes and an extremely large wardrobe. According to one of her boyfriends, Michael Bergen, he stated, Friday, I was at Carolyn's place. It was a nice building, a doorman building, but the apartment was unbelievably small even by New York standards. As you entered, there was a microscopic kitchen to the right, a bathroom to the left, and the rest of the place, maybe 10 or 12 square feet, was home. There was a box spring mattress pressed up against one wall and a closet just beyond that didn't even begin to hold her clothes. There were clothes everywhere, skirts, shoes, shirts, dresses, sweaters, mountains of clothes. Now let's talk in detail about the clothes that Carolyn wore. Black was easily Carolyn's favorite color to wear, not only because she lived in New York, but the color created a striking contrast to her features. Carolyn had black shirts in practically every classic style, whether it was long sleeve, short sleeve or sleeveless, she had it. 
as well as every luxury material, whether it be cashmere, wool, or 100% cotton. Having all of these varieties ensured that whatever the weather may be, or whatever occasion may come, she would certainly have a perfect black top to wear. The majority of her simple shirts were from Calvin Klein, and the simplicity of each one, no patterns or embroidery, just the plain black material, ensured that these items could easily be mixed and matched with practically everything in her wardrobe. She also enjoyed wearing classic white tank tops under blazers and jackets, or simply tucked into light trousers with a vibrant shoe while also having a variety of cashmere sweaters and cool tones, as well as plain button-down shirts, her favorite being a white button-down, which she wore with skirts, blue jeans, and even to events. When it came to dressing casual, Carolyn enjoyed her own fitted garments, but she also enjoyed that of her husband's, wearing his oversized clothes allowed for an even greater level of comfort. When it comes to Carolyn's pants and skirts, they are almost exclusively all solid colors, with only a few being of different patterns, but typically those will have a matching top to them. A lot of her skirts as well could easily transition from day wear to evening wear. These items, just like her tops, had a mix and match ability to them, allowing them to be paired with a variety of tops and jackets. Her skirts were also always on the longer side, never being above the knee. One of her favorite brands for skirts was Prada, as seen by this camel hair knee length option. When it came to her pants, she had them in a wide variety of neutral shades. And every neutral color you could need, she would have. The pants were fitted and slim, but not overly tight or overly loose. They were perfect and just right for her frame. She also truly enjoyed wearing a pair of cream-colored trousers. And her favorite brands for such were Calvin Klein and Prada. One of her most famous pairs of pants was her brown corduroy pants with exposed pockets. And she was seen wearing them over and over again on a multitude of different occasions. When it came to denim, she enjoyed Levi's and was often seen in a medium wash or a light wash. Carolyn almost exclusively never wore shorts. She instead often preferred a more feminine option of a dress or a skirt. When we think of 90s minimalism and simplistic, elegant dressing, Carolyn Kennedy almost always comes to mind. But Carolyn did not exclusively wear neutrals only. She did sometimes enjoy switching it up and adding a bit of flair and pizzazz to her overall style lookbook. Her dresses, like her skirts, were always cut at an elegant length and never were higher than just above the knee. Just as with many of her skirts, her dresses also had a unique universality and could be appropriate for a variety of occasions doubling as work attire and even date attire. Carolyn's favorite brand for evening wear was Yoji Yamamoto. And over the years, she was seen in his clothes time and time again. Now, let's take a look at these ensembles. From his 1997 fall winter collection, we see her in a black low cut blazer with a fake fur removable collar pairing it with a coordinating Yoji Yamamoto skirt. That same year, she sports another suit by Yoji, 
this time the skirt is a longer length and the neckline is higher as well. She pairs this outfit with short black gloves, a black hat, and her favorite black fake fur scarf. Her black wool coat was an essential that she paired with many different ensembles, for day and for evening. And here are some other suits by Yoji, which Carolyn wore for evening events in 1997, all coming from his 1996-1997 fall-winter collection or spring-summer collection. In 1998, Carolyn wore this ensemble to the White House, but she wore the dress in reverse. The dress also contained an adjustable scarf, and she paired her look with a black bag, long black gloves, and black pumps. Carolyn loved this Yoji blazer so much that she was photographed in it on two separate occasions, going to two different events. Carolyn was photographed in this three-piece Yoji suit, which came from his 1996-1997 fall-winter collection. Carolyn was also seen in one of his fabulous wrap dresses from his 1998 spring-summer collection. One of Carolyn's most fabulous evening looks is this wool ensemble. The skirt and shirt are separates but made to look as one, all by Yamamoto. There is a beautiful tie at the back of the skirt, which helps to unify the two pieces. In 1999, Carolyn continued to wear his looks, including this gray coat with tan accents, which ended up completing many of her evening looks. And from Yoji's 1998 spring-summer collection, she ended up wearing this 100% polyester ruched black gown. Here we see her in one of his white wrap blouses, along with a black raw silk ruffled skirt this look was quite unique in 1999, being simplistic, elegant, with a bit of flair. Most people would never even think about wearing such a pared-down, elegant, simplistic outfit as this, especially to an evening event. Carolyn certainly pioneered in that respect, by wearing outfits not traditionally worn to events, galas, and balls. Wearing day suits, simple black dresses, shirts paired with skirts, many of these items easily transitioning from day to evening. Although Carolyn's first preference for evening wear and her favorite evening wear designer was Yoji Yamamoto, she also enjoyed wearing different brands. Being often seen in dresses from Prada, Versace, Valentino, and Calvin Klein. In 1999, to the Fire and Ice Ball, she wore an Atelier Versace cream-colored floor-length gown. It was very exciting, wonderful evening. Yeah. What was your highlight? What was the, highlight for you? the entire evening was spectacular. There's no highlight. Here we see Carolyn in a simple black silk dress from Prada's 1995 spring-summer collection. And she also wears a beautiful camel and black jersey dress from Calvin Klein. When it came to Carolyn's evening looks, they all had a few things in common. They were feminine, sophisticated, pared down, and unique. Carolyn had a large collection of coats and jackets. While it was quite necessary to have them living in New York City, they not only served the purpose of functionality, but of unique style completion and experimentation. Like in her wearing this plaid green wool coat in 1996 by Valentino, 
or this red Prada mohair coat in 1997. It can be safe to say that Carolyn's favorite brand for outerwear was Prada, as she owned many of their pieces. Having a few of their knee-length wool coats in both black and tan, and another tan wool option in a shorter length. The majority of Carolyn's fashionable coats, work coats, and event coats were all black, with variations being in the brand, style, and fabric material. As we saw, though, Carolyn didn't exclusively wear black coats. She sometimes enjoyed lighter coats or coats with a little pizzazz, like this leopard print one. And as we had talked about before, with Yoji Yamamoto being one of Carolyn's favorite brands, she owned a great many coats by him, which she saved to be worn for special occasions or to be worn for fashionable events. Not only did Carolyn own practical, stylish, and fashionable coats which could be worn to events and galas, but she also had a variety of typical thermal winter coats, where their function had an emphasis on utility rather than beauty. And as a last point on her coats and jackets, she truly loved wearing leather. When it came to Carolyn's handbags, we almost exclusively see her wearing a black handbags only. And the one that she seemed to get the most use out of was her black Hermes Birkin. It was her go-to bag for work and could carry all of her essentials and even unessentials that she might need throughout the day. Because the bag was either a 35 or a 40, let me know what you think it was in the comments down below, it had the capacity to carry such items. One must note that Carolyn wore this bag before it had a craze of popularity, and I'm certain that if back then the bag had the same universality and trendy connotations to it as it does today, she would never have been seen in it. There are only a few bags of Carolyn's that are not black. One is yet another Hermes Birkin of the same size, but in a tan leather. The next is a large straw bag of a similar size and form. Also a small gold chainmail evening bag. And the last is an L.L. Bean tote bag. Carolyn enjoyed wearing Hermes bags, and this is one that is relatively unknown, going by the name of Hermes Maasai. Carolyn also truly enjoyed wearing this bag, which has been reissued and renamed as the Prada 1995 re-edition bag. We also see her in a few other everyday black bags. These are all in patent leather, and like the Prada bag prior, these are good mid-size bags. When it came to evening wear, she had a few black bags she could choose from. This bag, which is often confused with a Kelly, is actually a Christian Dior bag. Carolyn wore simple clutches and envelope style bags, but was thought of as a trailblazer when she wore her Comme de Garçon makeup pouch as her purse. Carolyn loved simple shoes. She had a wide variety. When it came to her boots, they were leather or suede, fitted, and most often had at least a three inch heel. They were tasteful and elegant, and she had all different styles. Her favorite brands for shoes were Prada and Manolo Blahnik. Like the rest of her closet, the predominant color was black, and this included the majority of her shoes. 
From time to time, though, she did enjoy wearing vibrant colors or patterns, mostly in the form of loafers from Prada. When it came to a daily work shoe, black loafers were her go-to in the warmer months, and black boots in the cooler months. She did sometimes wear flats, but more than often, she preferred a shoe with at least a small heel. 90% of the high-heeled shoes that we ever saw Carolyn in were black, either suede or leather, with varying heel heights, designs, strappy, not strappy, and of course from different brands. When it came to more casual and comfortable shoes, Carolyn enjoyed wearing a strappy pair of Prada sandals. And she also had her fair share of flip-flops. Along with having a fair amount of flip-flops, she possessed a good amount of athletic shoes and tennis shoes. When it came to her accessories, she took a very minimalistic style approach. She very rarely wore any jewelry, aside from sometimes wearing a simple bracelet, watch, or a simple elegant necklace. When it came to evening wear, she often instead chose to wear coordinating gloves, either of velvet or satin. She also had a nice collection of headbands, which she wore during the daytime, either to work or simply for different day functions. She had them in both tortoise shell and black. Carolyn loved to wear hats, but not only as daily wear, but for event wear as well. With the addition of a dark hat, further contrast accentuated her beauty. She also loved to accessorize with the use of scarves, mostly tied about her head. Most of these were from Gucci, but she also used scarves around her neck. Carolyn's famous sunglasses are handcrafted by the French brand Salima and are still available today. With the frame's style being known as Aldo, Carolyn possessed both the black pair and the tortoise shell pair. Thank you so much for watching as we explored the unique style and fashionable elements of Carolyn Bessette Kennedy's iconic wardrobe. Be sure to subscribe so you can be updated when new videos are posted, especially one coming soon about Carolyn's wedding to John F. Kennedy Jr., where we will then talk about her wedding dress. Be sure to like this video and comment down below it telling me your favorite part or aspect of her wardrobe and if you would still wear this style of fashion today. Thank you again for being a part of the Cultured Elegance family. I'll be sure to see you in the next video.